In this video, we're going to have a look at some of the questions from the checkpoint practice test from module one that may have caused you some difficulties. In number one, we are dealing with an exponential expression that we need to simplify. And there are two things that you need to remember when you are simplifying exponential um, expressions. And the first one is make sure that your bases are all prime numbers. So what we mean by that is that the bases must only have one and themselves as a factor. So if, for example, one of your bases was six, it would be a good place to start if you rewrote 6 as 3 times 2, which is a prime number multiplied by a prime number. The second thing that you then do once all your bases are prime is you apply your exponential laws in order to simplify. All right, so if we have a look at number 1e, we have two bases. We have a base of 3 and a base of 2. When you multiply powers with the same base, you add exponents. And when you divide powers with the same base, you subtract exponents. So for the base of 3, we start off with 3 to the power of n. We are timesing it by another base of 3. So we're going to add the exponent n plus 1. And then we are dividing by 3 to the 2n. So we subtract the exponent of 2n. Our next base is 2. 2 to the 2n is being divided by 2 to the 2n minus 3, so we need to subtract the whole of 2n minus 3. It's important here that we put that in a bracket because we are subtracting and we're going to need to distribute that negative 1 into that bracket. Right, if we just simplify here, n plus n is 2n, subtract 2n is 0, so we're just left with 3 to the power of 1. And here we need to just multiply or distribute that negative into the bracket. 3 to the power of 1 is 3. 2n minus 2n is 0, so we're just left with 2 cubed. 2 cubed is means 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, and 8 times 3 is 24. Okay, in number f, the bases on the exponents are variables, so we don't need to worry about um, changing it to prime numbers. So the coefficients, 4 divided by 2, is 2 over 1, or just 2. The base is x and it will be 2 minus a half. 2 minus a half is 1 and a half, which is 3 over 2. And if we write that in third form, it will be 2 square root x cubed. Okay, um, the next one we'd like to have a look at is number 3b. Number 3b, you were asked to solve for the variable. So we want to solve for r. Our equation has a radical. So we need to solve this equation by squaring both sides. We first check that the third is on its own on the left-hand side, which it is. So we can start straight away by squaring both sides. When you square a square root, it cancels out. So you're just left with 56 minus r, and r squared is r squared. It's a quadratic equation, so it's solved by getting um, the equation equal to 0. We now need to factorize that trinomial. The factors are 56. That will give us add up to 1 or have a difference of 1 are 8 and 7. We need to have positive 8 and a negative 7 in order to get positive 1 when we add our outers and our inners. So that means we can conclude that r is either negative 8 or positive 7. Whenever you solve an equation by squaring, you need to do a check to make sure that your answers are valid. The left-hand side in the original equation was equal to the square root of 56 minus r. So we are going to substitute the value for r as negative 8. The square root of 56 minus negative 8 is 56. square root of 56 plus 8, which is the square root of 64, which is just um, 8, not 4. The square root of 64 is 8. Right, the right-hand side was just equal to r, which in this case is negative 8. Now, positive 8 and negative 8 are not the same value, so the left-hand side does not equal to the right-hand side. So r equals negative 8 is not a valid solution to the equation. If we check r is equal to 7, left-hand side is 56 minus 7. That is equal to the square root of 49, and the square root of 49 is 7. The right-hand side is equal to 7. So the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, which means r equals 7 is a valid solution to the equation. 
The last question I want to have a look at is question four. This uh, shows you a graph of a population of frogs in a pond over a number of years. Okay, and there were three questions that you needed to answer. Number A, how many frogs were there in the beginning? So we want to know how many frogs there were before, they, before the t any time had passed. So we are looking for how many frogs there were at zero years. So if we read up the graph to where we meet the graph at the starting point, there are 45 frogs in the beginning. It's halfway between 40 and 50. Okay. Question B. How many years did it take for the population to reach 60? So now we're interested in the population of frogs and we want to know how long did it take to reach 60. So there's 60 there. If we go across to our graph and we find the point and we read down, we can see that it took 10 years for the frog population to reach 60. So the answer to number B is 10 years. And then you needed a number C to find the percentage growth in the population between 0 and 30 years. So at 0 years, we said that there were 45 frogs. That's how many there were to start with. We now need to know how many frogs there were after 30 years. So here's 30 years here. We read up to the graph at 30 and across. And that is a value of 110. So there are 110 frogs at 30 years. Now, if we want to find a percentage increase, we first need to find how much it's gone up by. So how? what is the difference from 45 to 110? So we would take 110, subtract 45. You're wanting to find out how much it grew by. So you're wanting to find that as a percentage of the starting population. So we divide by 45 and then multiply by 100. And that percentage, if you take 110 minus 45, divide that by 45 and multiply by 100 to get a percentage, it gives you 144,4%. So that is the percentage by which the population has grown over the 30-year period.